house of the Lord and go up to the mountain uh, to worship because every time we come to mass we're coming up the mountain to worship so we can be transformed by the presence of the Lord at the altar that's right behind me amen you notice that every church, every Catholic church, the altar is a little bit elevated. It's remind us that we're going up the mountain. So for my preaching moment during the context of this liturgy today, of the celebration of the sacred liturgy, I'm calling it uh, mountains, strongholds, and giants. You might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, there are no mountains around here. In fact, the tallest hill or mountain in the entire state of Louisiana is Driscoll Hill between Shreveport and Grambling, and it's only 530 feet, but still. And now you're probably saying, yeah, there's a levee over there, but you know that's not high enough. Can anybody say amen? I mean, that's the biggest hill we got. You know, preachers don't like hills because when the people don't like what the preacher's preaching, they try and find a hill or a mountain to throw them down. You know, they want to throw Jesus down a hill. So it's easy to preach here because there's no high hills. There's nowhere to throw you down. You can just preach whatever and then get out of town. Can, can somebody say amen to that? Yeah, I noticed nobody over here said amen, but I, I feel you on that though. So today we have three extraordinary scriptures and one in particular, I believe is for us, uh, those who come to worship to come up the mountain during this mass and every mass whether it's a low mass or a high mass in the first reading from Daniel it can be a little disconcerting like what is Daniel talking about let me just give you a little uh, uh, a backdrop here so the ancient one that he's referring to is God the Father and those thrones there is a throne in heaven we know that because Isaiah chapter 6 says that he saw a vision of the throne in heaven and so Jesus now is coming to God the Father, the Ancient One, to take his throne. And what did he receive? He received what Daniel, according to Daniel, he received a power, a dominion, and kingship. That is, God the Father handed Jesus authority over all of the earth. It's a powerful thing. And when you go to the second reading, Peter is testifying to this kingship this power and authority that God the Son gave him. So whenever we come up, and part of my charge today is to orientate us toward expectation of the supernatural, of a move of God, not only a sign, but a wonder, because every celebration of the Eucharist is a wonder. Something extraordinary happens, and it's gonna happen right here. The, the, the air gets rarefied when we go up the mountain, but because we receive the Eucharist so often it can become common and regular to us but God wants us to know that I'm inviting you up the mountain you notice when father comes up uh, when the deacon comes up this little elevation means that this is sacred space but also what happens during the celebration Jesus comes down from his high place to where we are at the base of the mountain Thank you. Somebody said amen. Somebody knows what we're talking about. This is an extraordinary thing because we as Catholics don't recognize that, wow, something supernatural and a wonder is happening at every celebration of the Eucharist. Amen. Yeah. I mean, look, if we have a problem though because only 30% of the people believe. But we're here. You're not here because of my good looks uh, or Father good looks. Well, Father looks pretty good. But I'm just saying, you're here because you want to enter into the wonderment of the presence of God at this altar. So we come up the mountain, this mountain, this church, flatlanders like we are, to receive and to commune with God and then to go out. You can't stay on the mountain. Let's get to the gospel now because see on this feast of the transfiguration, We've got some lowlanders like we are. They, they, they don't live, with, but the, the Peter, James, and John, they live down low. But Moses and Elijah who appeared, Moses knew about mountains. I mean, after all, God called them up Mount Sinai. And, and Moses had the audacity to ask the Lord, show me your Shekinah, or your Shekinah, your Shekinah glory. And God said, Moses, you can't see the fullness of my glory. Get in a rock over there and I'm gonna pass by. And then the Lord said, the Lord. So Moses knew something about that. In fact, when you read in Exodus, it says that Moses took uh, uh, Nadab, Abihu, and Aaron up the mountain. Whenever God says, come on up now, come on up now, something's getting ready to happen. But we've lost, many of us lost our sense of expectation that there's going to be a visitation. 
every time you go up the mountain, like at a mass celebration like this. Amen. So here we are now. Here we are. And now, like Peter, we're not mountain people. And Peter starts saying, Lord, this is good. The Lord manifests his glory. That's exactly what Peter is testifying to in 1 Peter. He's saying, we can testify that we heard the Father say about the Son that he's well pleased and that he's given him dominion, power, and authority over all the earth. And the Psalm today says what? Lord, you're king of what? Over all the earth. So that's what we're celebrating today, that God transfigured himself. He manifested, manifest means show, to show forth. He showed his glory to his people. And every time we come for this celebration, God shows his glory, but we can miss it. We can miss it. So God wants us to elevate our sense of expectation because there's a visitation and there's a manifestation of showing forth of his glory and power. He's, he's telling us, come on up now. So mountains, Sometime people like Peter and you and me, we don't know how to act on a mountain. Because when you go up high, uh, almost 10,000 feet, remember? Tallest hill, a mountain in Louisiana, 500 feet plus, 535 feet to be precise. So Peter lost his mind. He's caught up in the moment. And he says, Lord, it's so good to be here. Let's build some condos up here. Oh, he didn't say precisely that. But he said, let's build some tents. And you notice that God doesn't even respond it's, it, it simply is quiet. And then when the cloud comes, representative of the Father speaking now in this moment, in this transfiguration, he says this, not Peter, not John, not Moses, the, the giver of the law, not Elijah, the greatest of prophets, but the only one left is Jesus. Because the Lord Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Only one left and the Father speaks, this is my beloved son and when I'm well pleased. I, when we, on our last mission trip, we, up at, we went up high. The air gets thin up there. But, and, you, and, and those of us who are down low, you can't stay on the mountaintop. So what does the deacon say when one is present? Our father says, after we celebrate from up the mountain, he says, go, go where? Back down into the valley where you're going to have some mountains to face you, but you won't be up on high. Jesus knew this. It says after six days, at the beginning of Matthew chapter 17, verse one through nine, six days, what was happening? Jesus had told them in Caesarea Philippi, the son of man is gonna go and gonna be, gonna enter into his passion. And of course, Jesus asked them, who do people say that I am? This is what's been happening over the six days. God had been doing his work in the, near the Sea of Galilee and he brought them up, you and I, down low the sea down at sea level but God brought them up because he knew when they went back down they're gonna have trouble and when you come from this high place of the celebration when you go out you're gonna have trouble you're gonna face some mountains that's just a reality of life you can't avoid them but here's the good news not only mountains you're gonna face some strongholds because many of us are struggling with strongholds in our life we, we, we go along but there's some strongholds. It might be a stronghold of addiction. It might be a stronghold of alcoholism. It might be a stronghold or problem with our children, grandchildren, a problem with our health. Mountain strongholds and giants. There may be a giant facing somebody right now. Don't know the nature of it, but something can be so big in our lives. Like, my God, it's, it's a giant. Remember when the, uh, the spies went into the promised land? Ten of them out of the twelve, they said the people are like giants. But two of them said, no, we can take these people. God wants to change our thinking. Mountains, they're going to come. Strongholds, you're going to be in battle. Giants, here's the good news. This is what the Lord says to us today. He brings us here to feed us the bread from heaven. Because he knows once we go back down, they're going to be mountains, strongholds, and some giants. And don't look at your husband when we say giants or your wife. Because sometimes the giant is a continual battle that you and your spouse have. Do not say amen to that. I'm just saying it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And families, you know that we're in a lot of pressure right now in our country. There's a lot of division. There's a lot of, there's a lot of strongholds. There's a lot of mountains. There's a lot of giants that got to be slayed. But the Lord says he's still in the mountain moving business mountains are still being moved 
strongholds are still being loose bodies are still being raised there are many people that are concerned about their health got to wrestle with the insurance company that could be a giant in your life got to wrestle with the insurance company even now two years later some people are still struggling but God says that he can move the mountains he can keep us in the valley once we go down from here back down to the valley and he can hide us from the rain amen so this transfiguration God gives us this feast day in the middle of ordinary time why to encourage us that even though you're going through stuff he wants us to know that mountains are still being moved strongholds are still being loosed bodies are still being raised giants are still being slayed and our response is yes Lord we believe yes we can see that wonders are still what you do and so with that God gives us this supernatural wonder, not out there, but up here on the mountain, right here, right now, to strengthen you so you can go out and face your mountain. To face, thank you, sister, to face your mountain, to face your stronghold, to face your giant. So I leave you with this then. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. Bodies are still being raised. Giants, no matter who they are or what they are, are still being slayed. Can you say this with me? Yes, Lord. With passion. Yes, Lord. I believe that wonders are still what you do. Amen and amen.